Hi there, and welcome to Bike File with me, Waza, the show that tells you all you need to know about the best bikes on the market. Now, in this episode, I'm going to be checking out sports bikes here at Donington Park. But before we get on with that, here's what's coming up in the rest of the programme. It's the turn of some of the best sports bikes to come out of Japan. Everything from the dinky little grey import RVF 400 up to the brand new ZX6. It's time to get to grips with the Fireblade, and in case you hadn't guessed, that makes me very, very happy indeed, because the Fireblade is one of my favourite motorcycles of all time, ever. Why? Well, where to begin? It's so tricky, isolating one point of this bike that is so good, because not only are they all good, but it's the way they hang together as a whole that makes the Fireblade experience so special. Anyway, I'll take a deep breath, calm down a little bit now, and let's get to work. The defining part of the Fireblade experience for me is that front end. The way you sit plugged into it more directly than a teenager into a Game Boy. The way your weight is in exactly the right place for total control. The way the whole bike can be slammed from upright to knee slider in ooh, a nanosecond and in total confidence. All these things make the Fireblade special because big sports bikes shouldn't be this responsive. Staying with that front end, the brakes are absolutely legendary. Class leading, eyeball popping, stoppy throwing, brilliant they are. Best production bike brakes out yet, or at least they were, until the ZX6 came out. But we'll come to that later. And then there's the engine. Now in the past, recent incarnations of the blade have been accused by some people of being a little soft, a little tame, even, crikey, a little bit slow. Now personally, I'd never call a 170 mile an hour motorcycle slow, but there was a grain of truth in the criticism. The blade, once the baddest boy on the block, had become a little tame. But not anymore. Now up to 954 cc's from the original 899, and with peachy clean fuel injection, the blade is now badass and as fast as you like. 177 mile an hour is the most we ever got out of one speed testing, and although a GSX R1000 will hit nearly 10 mile an hour more, outright top speeds aren't quite the whole story. The deal with the blade is because its power kick is that little less brutal than something like a GSX R1000s, then you can use more of the power more at the time. Then there are the wheels. Oh boy. Obviously, these are not big nor are they clever, but they are fun. Pop the blade up in first with a sniffer clutch, snick into second and head into the sunset, grinning like the village idiot. The build quality is outstanding and as a very serious sports bike you can still live with day after day. Personally, I use mine for 15,000 miles of everything from commuting to touring to track days. The blade is unbeaten. And so to the downsides, because yes, there are some. First of all, the looks. Now there is no doubt that Honda have made this bike the best looking blade we've seen in years, but still it doesn't have the same badass street cred that those first 1992 twin headlight models did. And the final bugbear on the Fireblade makeup is insurance. Fireblades have been thrashed, trashed and stolen for years now and don't the insurance companies know it. So much so that this is one of the hardest bikes to insure in the country. Other than that, the Fireblade is an absolute belting motorcycle and truly an example of all that is wonderful in modern motorcycling today. And after all that excitement, I'm going to need a lie down. But first of all, here's the scores. Performance, 10 out of 10. Yes, yes and yes. Styling, 6 out of 10. Close, but no cigar. Covers up what really is a mad, mad motorcycle. Street cred, 8 out of 10. It's got presence and it's still got that Fireblade name on the side. Reliability, 8 out of 10. These bikes really are built to last. But that gearbox perhaps isn't if you're not lucky. Value for money, 9 out of 10. This bike will make you laugh, giggle, and possibly occasionally cry with excitement. Just make sure you can afford the insurance. A little later in the show, I'm going to be riding this here Kawasaki ZX6R. But in the meantime, here's Louise with Honda's delectable RVF 400. Fellow riders will know exactly what I mean when I say the words hooligan tour. You know those kind of bikes, the ones that bring out the little devil in you as a rider. The Japanese race are a perfect example, like this RVF from Honda. The Japanese manufacturer did a superb job of emulating the RVF 750 Superbike, which was ridden by many of the greats, including our very own Carl Fogarty. Even looking at this bike, all you want to do is jump on, tuck yourself behind that bubble, 
shred the nuts off it and just go ballistic. And when you do get on it, you immediately conjure up images of winner's laurels, checkered flags and start finish straight. These bikes are mental. The V4 motor isn't really happy until it's screaming above 7,000 RPM and desperately pleads for more. It's only when you hit that red line and bouncing off the limiter that the bike's finally satisfied. Maximum power may only be around 55 brake horse and top speed may not be your best friend topping out around 135 miles per hour. But you can hustle this little RVF through corners with maximum precision carrying huge amounts of momentum. Then there's the chassis. It's stiff and working with full-on racing suspension. You are faced with a tight little package that's hideous over uneven surfaces, but simply superb at going quite fast. It can be both a dream and a total pain. When you feel like you want to take it easy, the little RVF is simply the wrong bike to be on. But then if you're feeling fruity, there probably isn't a better machine to take out your frustrations on. Brakes on the little RVF are powerful enough, although a fast rider may demand more. As a female, I did find I had to apply a fair amount of pressure on the lever to haul the bike to a standstill from high speeds. This bike is destined for the home of a sports bike rider and isn't solely intended for a commuter. After a while, this seat will become hard and uncomfortable and it's a bit of a stretch to the handlebars and will place a bit of pressure on your wrist. But we want to know how this machine squares up on the bike file scores on the doors. Let's take a look. As for performance, the bike's right up there and scores a whopping 9 out of 10. It's hard to find a bargain machine that could bring more smiles per mile for the enthusiastic sports rider. And in the comfort department, the bike scores six. Let's face it, the bike ain't made for comfort. Its aggressive riding position means it will appeal to a smaller minority. But we must remember the bike is, after all, a balls out sportster. Looking at the build of the RVF, it scores 8 out of 10. It's been around for a few years now and has certainly stood the test of time. A surprisingly large amount of bikes available today are still in superb shape. And as for street cred, the bike clocks up yet another 8 out of 10. This bike is all about grin factor. It doesn't matter how old you are or what kind of machinery you're into, the RVF is cool, no question. And as for value for money, the bike rocks up yet another 8. RVFs only ever came into the UK as grey imports. That means they were never officially imported by Honda. You can find a later model available for around 4 to 5 grand. Rather good value for such a high quality pocket rocket. Well, that's all from me and this cheeky race wreck from Honda. Let's head back to Wasser. And now from one Revy buzz bomb to another as we slip seamlessly from the RVF 400 to Yamaha's freshly revamped for 2003 Manic R6. Once the king of the Sport 600 castle, the poor R6 has, through no real fault of its own, found itself dropping back a bit in the face of the killer onslaught from the new boys in the class, namely Kawasaki ZX6 and Honda's CBR, both of which leave the Yami feeling a little dated by comparison. But who cares about fashion because the R6 still looks the business and is a fantastically rewarding bike to cane the living daylights out of both road or track, and with its updates for 2003, it just became better at both. The biggest love-hate area on last year's bike was its tendency to tank slap when you were hard on the power. On the one hand, this gave the bike stacks of edgy character and boosted its reputation as a no-compromise sports bike. But on the other hand, it meant the steering damper was the first thing most owners bolted on as soon as they wheeled their bikes out the showroom. But for 2003, this foible is banished, gone forever, never to be seen again. Cleverly though, through a combination of new front tyre profiles and geometry tweaks, Yamaha have managed to do this without slowing the bike's legendary quick steering. Neat trick or what? The bike still tips in as fast and accurate as ever, and the only fly in the ointment is the slight uncertainty from the front end when you crank right over and push in hard. But to be honest, you've really got to be going some to notice this. As for the motor, that's blessed with fuel injection at last, and this does indeed pep up the mid-range somewhat, making the R6's power delivery slightly smoother than it was before. Only slightly, however, because against the competition, the Yamaha is still the most gutless low down, and you'll still need to rev the absolute living daylights out of it to stay in that stonking top-end sweet spot. Otherwise, this freshly revamped R6 is as mad as its predecessor, and still a bike for those who just want to go fast and hard as often as possible. 
it hasn't got the riding sophistication of the new CBR or ZX6, but for some, that's just going to be another part of its appeal. Performance, 7 out of 10. Still very good road or track. Styling, 7 out of 10. Looking ever so slightly dated against the CBR and ZX, but still a mighty fine looking beast. Street cred, 7 out of 10. Everyone knows the R6's reputation. Reliability, 8 out of 10. They've been around a long time, everything's proven, and there are no major glitches with this motorcycle. Value for money, 7 out of 10. Plenty of deals to be had, and it's a good bike for the cash. That's it for the R6, and that's also it for part one. But stay tuned for part two, when I'll be back with this year's ZX6, Rod will be on Kawasaki's ZRX 1100, and Louise will have all the handy buying info you could ever want to buy yourself a sports bike. See you then. Welcome back to part two, where very shortly I'm going to be testing this year's ZX6. But before that, we've got Louise with the buying tips and Dr. Rod's big road test. Once upon a time, Kawasaki muscle bikes used to strut along the street, kicking sand in the eyes of lesser machines. Starting with the original Z1, Big Zs ruled the performance roost through much of the 70s and 80s, with bikes like the original GP Z1100 and Lawson Replica 1000R. Well, if you missed those bikes the first time around, welcome back to the future. Kawasaki's ZRX 1100 isn't an old-fashioned bike, quite the contrary. It's a thoroughly modern bike in every respect, but the big K have had the nous to take a long, hard look through their own back catalogue and shamelessly take some styling cues from their previous icons. If you're looking for modern street muscle which evokes the ghosts of GPZ's past, this bike's for you. The engine, of course, is a DOHC4 in the best Z tradition and was originally developed for the ZZR 1100. It's powerful and tractable and comes from a long and distinguished line. It should be bulletproof too. The bike is beautifully put together and the styling captures just the right balance between old and new. I have many fond memories of the original Z1s and GPZs and this bike really does capture the spirit of its ancestry. And there's certainly nothing old fashioned about the way this big Z pulls. A claimed 120 brake horsepower launches the bike forward in the best muscle bike tradition, while state-of-the-art suspension and deep brace swing arm holds a plot together with confidence. The 17-inch wheels wear big fat sticky rubber and massive discs with twin piston calipers haul it down from speed. And if you're looking for a mixture of performance and comfort, this bike gets the mix just right. The upright riding position is practical and comfortable, and that Lawson replica fairing dislodges the worst of the wind blast. I like this ZRX so much that I'd be very happy to make room for one in my garage was it not so overcrowded already. It combines everything you could possibly want in a motorcycle into one tidy package. Powerful and dependable motor, excellent suspension and brakes, good handling, fine looks and a nod at some real heritage. What more could you possibly want for under seven grand? So how does it score? For performance I have to give this bike nine out of ten. Its big grunty engine pulls like a train and just keeps pulling the more you ask of it. A bottomless pit of unbridled power on demand in the best Z tradition. Lovely. The running gear is up to the job too with excellent suspension and brakes and the whole package hangs together admirably. It's a comfortable bike too with a riding position designed to fit human beings. The pegs are high enough to give decent ground clearance and the seat will easily accommodate a rider and passenger. Even the grab handles are well thought out. Buy this bike and burn rubber all day. Nine for comfort. For reliability, I'll drop grudgingly to an eight out of ten. Winter salt doesn't always agree with the finish on big Kawasaki's, and I've learnt to be very careful about washing the bike regularly and keeping it clean to preserve the finish. Wash it regularly or weep. I have to score this bike highly for street cred too. It combines street presence with genuine performance and there's no questioning the bike's heritage. If you thought Kawasaki used to rule the roost for big street bruisers, I have news. The King is back. 9 out of 10 for street cred. And now, back to Wazza. So now you're all excited and you want yourself a sports bike, here's Louise with all the buying knowledge you could want. Haha, we make very good motorcycle for you. 
True, they do. Japanese bikes are great. They come in all shapes and sizes and styles. They're reliable and there are four big manufacturing names to choose from, all of which are perfectly acceptable. So will you find something to suit you, sir? A lot of Japanese bikes build sports bikes. Uh, that's the majority of, of their market. Um, so sort of Kawasaki's are, traditionally a lot of them are green, you know, very aggressive sports styling from the front. Again, Honda's, you know, very good build quality and their design um, all, all the way through the, the ranges of manufacturers. Popular with uh, anything from 21 year old up to, to the late 60s. You know, they, they cater for sports bikes, sports tourers, tourers, so there's pretty much everything to suit everybody. Japanese bikes uh, really are popular with everyone right across the board. They pretty much make everything for everybody's needs or tastes, right through from your performance to your muscle bike, your cruiser, even your smaller scooters. I would think with this vast choice of machinery, you're going to find something to float your boat. OK, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki and Kawasaki all have some dogs in their range, but the good stuff is top notch. R6s, CBR, Gixxers and the Green Machine ZX6R are all good-looking, high-performance bikes. And that's just in the sports bike range. These big guns make tourers, cruisers, muscle bikes, learn illegals, all of which look good and perform well. But are they practical machines? All Japanese bikes these days tend to be styled similarly the same. Obviously, they're mass-produced machines produced by different manufacturers, but more or less all, all the same ilk of machine. Reliability, um, certainly reliability, I would put that as number one to anything at all. Um, good value, good value for money um, and good styling. Japanese bikes are practical, very reliable and don't suffer from the Italian problem of build quality, although Kawasaki could do better on the finish front. They're comfy if you buy the right one. There's no point in pretending the sports bike are as comfy as tourers. They're not, but they're not supposed to be. If comfort is what you want, then check out some of the other bikes in their range. You'll find something suitable. That is guaranteed. But what do you want in your garage? Oh, they're excellent value for money, yeah. I mean, the, uh, the bikes that now are like uh, 98 to 97s are still fetching uh, you know, a good few thousand pounds. You don't lose a dramatic uh, amount of money on them unless you neglect them. Performance is very, very good. Japanese build good, reliable, you know, fast bikes. Uh, you're not going to go wrong with the Japanese manufacturer. Everybody and his dog at some point in their motorcycling life will have owned and ridden a Japanese bike. They're everywhere and the reason for that is they're good. Solid bikes that come in every possible variation and combination to keep you individuals out there happy. Something for everyone, I'd say. Ha-ha! Very good. For a while now, Kawasaki ZX-6 had languished in the doldrums somewhat in the ultra-competitive Sport 600 class. It was always fast, it was always a handler. Trouble was, the competition, as they got hotter and hotter, were just a little bit faster, a little bit sharper, and most importantly, better looking. Even a capacity increase last year where the bike leapt to 636cc from its original 599 wasn't enough to send it to the head of the pack. Put simply, the ZX6 was starting to show its age. But it seemed the men at Kawasaki knew this because at the end of last year, this here all new ZX6 broke cover. And just one glance is enough to tell you this bike means business. For starters, it is tiny. This is a motorcycle that has not only spent a lot of time in the wind tunnel, but it's also been down the gym on a very strict regime with a personal trainer. However, you won't need to do any of these things to get on one, because despite its microscopic dimensions, the ZX6 is actually surprisingly comfortable. So you can still hack a little bit of fast touring or commuting outside of your regular flat out tomfoolery. However, potentially practical or not, if you buy one of these and don't take it on a track day, then I would suggest you be dragged outside, whipped, and then publicly hung from the nearest lamppost in your leathers as an example to others of what not to do. What I'm getting at is this bike is a stunning track performer, and to not take it there if you owned one would be an absolute travesty. This bike turns into corners with devastating haste and unerring accuracy. Hugs any line you care to go for tighter than a child hugs its mother on its first day at school, and it will lean lean and lean some more until you feel the mirrors will surely touch down. 
And on top of this Razor accuracy, you'll find stunningly high quality standard suspension units, front and rear. They give so much feedback, you're never in any doubt as to what the tyres are doing. Then there are the brakes. Oh yes, they are good. You'll find blade levels of bite here, but backed up with even more feel and even more control. As if the rest of the bike weren't good enough already, you'll be over the moon to discover that the motors are belter too. Now, it could be argued that Kawasaki are packing an unfair advantage with their 636ccs in here over the rest of the class is 599. But then, this isn't a race class, no rules and regs apply, so Kawasaki can actually do what they like. What you get is a motor with plenty of poke and the strongest mid-range yet found on any 600 bike. The delivery is super clean, the howl from the end can is sex on a stick and this is a deliciously flexible motor to get your teeth into. Oh, and should you fancy wheelies, then this is the 600 for you because that extra mid-range makes keeping it up easier than ever. So there you have it, the ZX6R is a blinding motorcycle and that's my final word on the subject. Well, apart from these actually, because here come the scores. Performance, 9 out of 10. Absolutely stacks of it. Styling, 9 out of 10. Best looking 600 for my money. Street cred, 8 out of 10. It's new, it's cool, and it looks good. Ooh, sounds nice too. Reliability, 7 out of 10. So far, they've not been around long enough for us to know of any major problems with them, but then again, I can't foresee any because Kawasaki's track record in this field has been very good to date. Value for money, 7 out of 10. You've got to pay to have the latest, but this bike will reward you. Well, that brings us to the end of the show, and a good job it is too, because I am absolutely beat after the day we've had here today. Anyway, please join us again next week, and we'll be back slowing the pace down a bit with American motorcycles. See you then.